Hello and welcome to another episode in my 52 things on my arty bookshelf. So what I'm doing this year is every week or so I'm making a piece of mixed media art inspired by one or more of the books on my arty bookshelf. So let's get on with it and I'll show you what I did this week. So this is actually a new book in my, my collection. My friend Penelope gave it to me because she said I'm the only one that's as interested in mazes and labyrinths as she is. As you can see the pages turn round and round and it's got this red line going through the book. A couple of years ago I had started a series which reminds me I should probably get back to that series looking at my personal symbols and one of those was the labyrinth and I'll put a link in the playlist if you want to go back and have a look at it. And actually, I'm still thinking about last week's book in Myro Memories, and I had thought that I had a different book, but I couldn't find it. So I pulled out this book instead as my second inspiration. And this is a book off all about textile arts in the US. And oh, I really like those houses there. And I'm going to take inspiration from that, especially from the quilting part of it, but I'm also still thinking about this little book of my daughters that I have that I looked at a couple of weeks ago, and I've started cutting out little more bits. I had a lot of fun with the found poetry that I did that week, so I've started cutting out some more bits of the words and putting them on the different pages and I've also started cutting out some more of her little bits and this little fellow needs a needs to find a home but it's just he's sitting in that pocket for now and she had drawn this little maze in her book so of course I have to take it out and curiously enough it actually is the same size as my book it fits perfectly on my book pretty pretty funny coincidence isn't it and this is the back of the book and this actually relates back to my last video as well my daughter's art teacher who I mentioned in the last video gave me a tip for how to stitch on delicate or fragile paper she said if you take strips of masking tape and stick them across the back of your piece it's a really cheap and quick way to strengthen your paper and you're less likely to get holes in it. Here's the piece that she was working on at the time which I really loved and I took a photo of it. She also told me about this book that I still need to look up. It is about contemporary textile and thread arts. I put the masking tape all across the back off the paper and now I'm going to make some holes in it to make it easier for the needle to get through. It's a lot easier to pre-poke the holes and as I'm doing this I'm reminded of how deceptively long the path through a labyrinth is. That's something that I have noticed when I've been walking labyrinths that they don't look that big but they sure are long. And after I've punched through all of those holes, I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to to thread it in and out through all of the holes. And it reminds me of the little needle threading kits that my kids used to get when they were little, where they would get a shoelace and a picture punched with with holes in it on a piece of cardboard and they would thread the shoelace through the holes. And this this is very much what it feels like. And just as it took a really long time to punch all of those holes, it's going to take an equally long time to stitch my path along the labyrinth. After last week's video and the things that I was thinking about were pretty heavy and pretty intense, and actually the book that I was thinking of pulling out for this week was also pretty heavy and intense. So I think I'm glad that I didn't find it and that this is just uh, going to be a sweet little page for me, for me to think about lots of things, to think about my kids and all kinds of other things. And fortunately, because this is a maze and not a labyrinth, I didn't have to go through the whole entire thing. The last bit just had a quick exit route. And now I'm thinking about that book, Labors of Love, the second book that I'd pulled out. And I'm thinking about how sweet it is to hold out my books and have all these memories. And this really was a labor of love thinking about my daughter. So I've added these little paper hearts on here and I'm going to do some faux stitching, which is what I usually do 
on paper I, rather than do, doing actual stitches. I just do dashed lines with a marker. And here's the finished piece. I think it's really sweet. And I've added, I've added some words, cut out some words for this one. Pick up the opportunity. And it says start before and finish right now. And once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon.